What are you making of uh, the market movements we're seeing on that end where we're shedding bit by bit every day? You know, I'm not too worried about that. You know, Kenya's um, fundamentals are not the strongest, but its industrial base is one of the most developed on the continent. I think that um, the market um, is uh, directionless now, mm -hmm. you know, but um, people are looking for profits, some people are looking for exits, some, but if you see that the banking sector, once again, is doing very, very well, mm -hmm. suggesting to me that it's lending to someone, now I hope it's not lending to someone <laughs> in the sense of the Nigerian <laughs> banking market, um, but I believe that there must be some meaningful underlying activity. I think this is time for profit. Yeah. I think it's time for opportunities in the Kenyan market. Um, I think that the longer term view on the Kenyan market is a very positive one. Um, um, it will go through the same uncertainty that everybody's going through right now. Mm -hmm. But I am, I am not as worried as some are about the Kenyan market. Well, you know, let's bring you into this discussion here because we've just started to wrap the banking earnings season up uh, over on that end. And with that, uh, having come to the fore, we've got other stocks standing in the spotlight, one of them being uh, Kakuzi in the agricultural space. We saw the, uh, the company out with numbers yesterday. What did you make of those? Oh, very good morning to you, Alicia. It's, it's good to hear that Charles is such an eternal optimist. Uh, well done, Charles. <laughs> but you know, to talk about Kakuzi, you know, we have to bear in mind that Kakuzi does you know, avocados, tea, uh, coffee, agroforestry and well, um, as well. I, I think the numbers were, were, were fairly decent. I, I believe the, the numbers, they had made something like 80 million shillings in, in profit, but they are uh, sort of suffering it going forward, really, the, the fact that tea prices are being affected, avocado prices, there may be actually a decline in demand as well as a decline in supply from, from the Kenya side. I think that's going to be a bit of a challenge uh, going forward. But, but the numbers were pretty much uh, as expected. We've had uh, some rumor about a possible labor unrest occurring in that sector. Uh, is that a possible headwind moving forward yet? I, I think yes, you know, right now, given the current economic times, given the high inflationary environment, I think workers are looking at getting any little bit that they can. It, it has been suggested that there could be some unrest in the agricultural sector, but it remains to be seen whether this actually uh, pans out. You know, if one was to take a moral perspective from this, I sometimes tend to think a lot of what these workers are asking for, to some extent, is actually uh, justifiable, mm -hmm. quite frankly. Yeah, hi, Ewan. What's your view about the agricultural sector in Kenya? Isn't it well developed? Y yes, it, it, it is well developed. It is actually 25 to 26 percent of our uh, GDP. So, so it, it contributes a hell of a lot, you know, uh, to, to this, uh, the, the country. And, and quite frankly, what we're going through right now, the drought especially, is it's very tough, it's very challenging. And really the key to this whole discussion, I think, is the impending short rains. I really hope they come. It's been suggested that the, the El Nino rains will be coming. I hope we're prepared for that. Because should that happen and should we get, uh, you know, a decent rainfall, mm -hmm. then, you know, we could conceivably have a decent harvest. Mm -hmm. And that could actually bring inflation numbers down. Should inflation numbers come down, that is sort of a little bit Bit of good news, optimistic good news on the economy that we need, and that could perhaps translate into a buoyant uh, bourse and a resurgent bourse in the late, later half of this year. You, that's why I think that structurally Kenya is so much more different from Nigeria because it has this thriving agricultural base. And, and, and that em mitigates prices, enables the economy to sustain itself. What's your view? Um, yes, but, but remember, uh, we're also, I guess, uh, bound by the vagaries of, of, of the weather. So yes, on the one hand, it, it does sustain the, the country, but the moment you have something like what we're going through, this drought, you know, everything comes down with it. You know, that's, I guess, the downside to it. Mm. Well, uh, Charles, if we look at it, I mean, that having been said, we've got uh, dealers at this stage looking at uh, U.S. currency flows from agricultural exports, from the tourism space as well. Do you see either at this stage of the game offering the local unit significant enough support? Uh, the currency, that mm -hmm. is. Um, I think that everyone is risk averse from a currency point of view, for emerging currencies point of view. I think the dollar is likely to strengthen in the short term, in the short to medium term. The dollar is likely to strengthen as we get support from the Fed, significant support from the Fed, um, and clarity about the Fed policy. So I, I could expect that we'll see dollar strength within the next three to six months. Yeah. Um, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not 
um, sure that one at this point can say with any certainty about the direction of the currency or mm -hmm. short term, only to say that most emerging market currencies, including Kenya's shilling, Nigeria's naira, uh, I, I, so I suggest even South Africa's rand, may see some depreciation yeah. relative to the dollar. Well, Ewart, it has been trading pretty flat of late. In the meantime, we've seen inflows filtering through uh, from foreign investors in the equity space continuing to mop up Safaricom, BAT, Achi River Mining, East African breweries as well. Uh, just looking at that, I mean, local investors continuing to sell off on East African breweries uh, despite that issuance of a court injunction stopping uh, them acquiring uh, Tanzania breweries. But we've got uh, foreign investors continuing with the uptake there. Why such? different uh, reactions. Yeah, I, th I think you need to bear in mind that not all local investors are selling. The reason some local institutional investors are selling is because they were overweight on, on breweries. You know, I guess if you look back at their investment policy statements, they have exceeded their limits, and so they had to reweight their, their portfolio. So yes, there has been some sort of selling. The local institutions haven't been terribly active in the equity market. The foreigners are coming in, certainly. We've seen a heavy activity in Safaricom. Safaricom just gone ex dividends, so at three shillings and 50 cents, 3.55, it is presenting good value for them. And and uh, with regards to breweries, I think a lot of foreigners are coming in. Tomorrow morning, as you mentioned correctly, is the announcement. We wait to see what they say, especially with regards to this court injunction. Maybe there will be uh, an appeal. Uh, who knows? Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see that tomorrow morning. Uh, let's leave it there with you. Thanks so much for having joined us. Uh, Charles, just to close off on that note, of course, as you had said, we are anticipating East African breweries results. We have seen a lot of foreign investor interest in, on that counter. What's your outlook there or your expectation on that earnings front? I think it's a meaningful count. It's one that we've tracked a lot. It's one that attracted a lot of in international investor interest. And um, it's, a, it's a good counter. I mean, it's, a, it's one of the baseline counters on that market. So I'm not surprised that um, uh, there's a lot of interest there. Mm -hmm. um, I think the beer market in, in East Africa is fairly competitive. But that this is one of the dominant players in that market. And yeah. so I expect that it would uh, be a positive uh, investment to make.